Hi, my name is Michael Friedlander, and welcome to The Gift Tree. As I hope you'll know by now, The Gift Tree is a storytelling program. We tell stories that offer gifts that we hope will make a difference for the better in the lives of those we touch. In each case, the storyteller will offer a gift or gifts that have made a difference for the better in his or her life. But we leave it to you to take whatever gifts you like from the stories told. And without further ado, let me introduce you to our storyteller today. So, our storyteller today is Michelle Lemien, a decorated Marine Corps fighter pilot who's flown more than 2,000 tactical hours. By the time he finished telling me about his career as a Marine, I asked him if he'd consider leading a Gift Tree Veterans Outreach Program. And when he said that he'd help, I was just over the moon. So let me tell you a little about his background and how I came to make that memorable trip to the moon. Vishal has served for over 17 years at multiple theaters around the world. In 1998, at the age of 17, he joined the Marines. And oh, I think I forgot to mention that before he enlisted, he was invited to the United States Olympic water polo trials, which I think was very cool. Anyway, in 2001, three years after he enlisted, 9-11 happened and Michelle was deployed. He was now fighting a real war. In the summer of 2005, he was granted a commission as an officer in the Marine Corps and he decided to compete with 300 other Marine officers for two slots to become a Naval Flight Officer. Well, he was awarded one of those two slots and he happily went off to flight school where he worked through five different phases of the flight school program. Once there, he competed against hundreds of others to become a fighter pilot, and after two years of training, he was awarded the honor of flying the Hornet as a fighter pilot. So needless to say, he was obviously very good at this flying thing because he then landed up in Miramar, the home of Top Gun. I'm tempted to say he was Tom Cruise, but I think it would be more accurate to say that Tom Cruise was probably him. He was now flying an $80 million aircraft in combat in every theater of operation around the world that saw combat. His story reads like a novel. He worked for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he met the King of Saudi Arabia in the desert, and that's just the beginning. And now it's time to talk to Vishal. So, Vishal, I have to say how excited I am that we finally managed to get together to record this. Uh, one of the things that really struck me in our conversations leading up to today is your almost unbridled passion for the military and how you've embraced this whole idea of storytelling and the idea of how mining the stories of vets could really help them get out those stories and gifts. But maybe the place to start is this. I remember you telling me about the one purpose for which you and everyone in the military serve, and it struck me that might be a really good place to start. One thing that I think most individuals will realize if you talk to someone in the service is we are, when we serve, we are very, we, we serve for one purpose, to serve in a greater capacity or serve something greater than ourselves. And that is why we start our journey, whether it be in the Army or in the Navy or in the Marine Corps or the, or the Air Force or, or the Coast Guard, you know, or the National Guard, anything. But we serve for a purpose. And that is where our frame of reference is. That's where our minds are at. So when you do something that in to most people is out of the normal, a normal 18-year-old son or daughter traveling on a billion dollar boat around the world, you know, interacting with different cultures every single day and, and finding ways to meet needs of different countries. That is, to most servicemen, that is their every day. That's so normal. But if I was to tell someone like you or me now, if you, that's what you did for the first, for your four years, I'll we'll say, whoa, whoa, let's just stop. Let me hear more about that and why, how did that shape you? You know, what, how, why is that important? And that there's a story there. And I think most of these stories can, we just ask for them. And I think the, the target for this is veterans who are leaving the service because we struggle with identifying ourselves. And I think we try to force our stories onto our resume. We try to force our stories accomplishments onto an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper or to someone who does, who's never done it before. And I don't believe we should force anything. I think let's let these veterans just tell their story because in a story, you can tell what type of person they are, 
their work ethic, their their standards of living, if they have a moral conscience, if they're socially fit to leave the military service and be amongst the rest of us who can speak to people not in a military jargon. There's a story behind all of this. And I think I think that is the target audience. And I think we just ask for them and we just give them an opportunity to do so. I don't believe there is an opportunity to do that. So let me offer this segue into your story and gift yourself. Why don't you talk a little bit about decision making in the military and how it kind of impacted you personally? Losing wasn't an option. Failure was not an option. I like to tell people in the civilian world now when I speak to them and they talk about decision making and, well, I was talking to a client and it didn't work out. And, but, you know, there's, there's more and we'll talk to them next week. Or I was like, no, it doesn't work like that. If I make the wrong decision, somebody dies right? That's, that's some pressure. So guess what? Failure is not an option. And if you fail, you live with that decision or you die with that decision. So, and even if the decision we make and the things we do in the military weren't, and even the way I lived and handled my career weren't, those were big things that big decisions I was making and either take the road or get off. And I think that's how I lived. It wasn't I don't want to confuse it with drive and initiative, but I don't want to discredit that. I, I believe that you have to be driven and you have to be, you have to be passionate, driven, and you have to want something. But at the same time, you know, our mind will function differently. Or but would you characterize that as a gift? I mean, if, if I were to say to you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, the gift there is your mindset and the way, way you view your actions and make decisions. But I believe that if you live your life as if failure was not an option, if there was no other, if there's no other path to go, there's plenty of gifts on that road. You know, you can say, well, this is the road I'm taking. And then you make, you take advantage of every opportunity that you have. If you don't like it, well, find a way to like it. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do once you're on that road. Now, I can tell you when I was, when I was in flight school, I didn't like a lot of it. I didn't like the, I didn't enjoy putting in 12 hours a day of studying things that look Chinese to me. I didn't enjoy getting yelled at when I did something wrong. I didn't enjoy when the plans changed and it rained and they changed the plans on me. I, you know, I didn't enjoy failing my events. I, I didn't enjoy a lot of it, but failing was not an option. So you take those experiences and you leverage them into your next journey and you keep going. So I think that is the gift. The, uh, was there a specific story that you can point to that led you to that gift or that Reflect that gift. That failing was not an option. Yeah. Yeah. That story starts uh, just a couple months after, or excuse me, a couple days after I received my wings in Pensacola, Florida. And that's where I finished flight school. You become a winged air crew of an aircraft. And for me, it was the F-18. And I ended up going to the fleet replacement squadron, which is where we train winged aviators to fly and operate the F-18. And for me, that was Miramar. So I went to Miramar to go do that. And, and that is essentially where you learn. And, and, and I started in a class there and, and, I, and I started um, progressing in the syllabus. And it was very vigorous and people fail events. And, you know, once you fail an event there, you're kind of done. What's an event? So, yeah, great question. Okay, so the event, it could be an academic, it could be a test. It could be a simulator. It can be someone watching you. Um, fly the aircraft in the back seat. It can be you in the back seat, which was in my scenario with a pilot in the front seat, evaluating the way you operate the aircraft. It could be anything, but it's, there's a syllabus and each event in the syllabus is graded. Well, the way it worked was if you were to fail three events, you go to a board, the board would convene and they would make the assessment. If you were still number one, safe to fly, and number two, if they were going to continue on, continue you on to the syllabus. And for me, that happened pretty fast. I failed my first three events uh, within the first couple months of, of starting that program. And it was a vigorous program, learning how to fly that jet. And I went to the board and they saw my enthusiasm. I was bright eyed and bushy tailed. And <laughs> they said, it's all right. Uh, we'll give you another shot at it. So I redid the events and I got another shot at it. And next thing you know, I'd failed a couple more events. You know, I was determined to not, to make it. I mean, failure was 
it's not an option, right? You don't you don't go there and just say, I'm going to fail an event, I'll, I'll do another job. No, I've committed four or five years of my life to get to that point. And uh, so a little event and a board's not going to stop me from going home and take, picking up a rifle and doing another job. That's not, that's not how it's going to work. So I went on to the other board and they did the assessment. They, they said, okay, this is unorthodox. You know, whenever, no one's ever made it out of two boards from what I knew at that point. And I left the boardroom just like, you know, you're standing in your uniform at the position of attention with everyone in the table and you just say, yes, sir, you know, and, and they ask you all the questions. I left the boardroom pretty rattled, but, but they said, all right, you're, you're going to make it uh, or you're going to move on or pick up where you left off. So I went back and I went back to my class. I did the events and sure enough, I failed another couple events. And at this point, I thought my career is over. I was pretty far along into the program. I was, I was studying every day, putting in the long hours, putting in the long nights, doing all the events. And I had failed another event and it was a single event. It was just a single event. And they said, no, board, you're going to the board. We're going to get rid of you. They sat me in a boardroom. There was one, two, three, four, five instructors and maybe six, six instructors around the table. No, it was an odd number, so it might have been five or seven around the table, one at the head. And they went down, they all asked me questions. The one at the head of the table pulled out a piece of paper, asked me 50 questions, didn't tell me if I was right or wrong. I was in there just answering his questions for nearly 30 minutes, maybe more. And then the other ones finished their questions. By the last one, he looked at the other instructor, looked at me and just shook his head left and right. And he said, do you want to be here? And I said, yes, I definitely want to be here. He's like, all right, you're excused. I was like, thank goodness if you just didn't grill me like I just got grilled. I left the room. I got, I got, my mentor came up to me the next, or later that day. I went back, to, I went to the bar and I was like, I'm done. My flying career is over. Like I've failed all this work for nothing. I'm going to be an administrative chief, you know, which is an honorable career. One of my friends does that. It was the most rewarding careers of his life. I ended up working with the reconnaissance community, all of that. So I don't want to discredit that. But that wasn't in the cards for me, right? So, yeah. so, so I get a call from my instructor and he's like, get back to work. And I was three sheets to the wind. <laughs> and um, my buddy drove me back and I was drunk. I had my flight suit half unzipped, right? And I go to his office. He's like, what? What do you want? I was like, yes. You know, I was respectful. He's like, show up tomorrow. You're back in the program. Finish and get out of here. It's just finish. You know, and I realized that there's no substitution for hard work and strong work ethic, and there's no substitution for the way you think. I was committed not to fail. No one had ever made it through those many boards. No one had ever even made it to that third board, let alone putting millions and millions of dollars of training in, into you, and they, were, they wanted to throw me away. And I think maybe one of those instructors, and what, what had happened was one of the instructors looked at the guy who was trying to get rid of me, and said, he just answered 49 out of your 50 questions correct. You can't get rid of him. And they said, story. right? So, yeah, right so yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example. Just, yeah. And even failure was in my cards. It was in my future, right? I mean, at one point I was like, well, I'll just take the failure and go get a couple of drinks. You know? but, <laughs> but that was the closest I got to giving up, I think. You know? But it wasn't an option. You know, there was, I didn't know where I was going. I was, you claw and you dig until the very end. And uh, the gift there is simple. Make every, live your life as if maybe there was no tomorrow, but more, more simply put, never make every decision you make. Every decision you make should be as if failure was not an option. You should never feel that there's another way out. The path you chose is the path you chose. Make every opportunity, whether it be a failed event or something horrible happening into, into an experience and then Keep that journey going. Find a way to succeed. There is a way. So failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. No, that is the gift. It's not, yeah. Well, that's a great, great story. So was this before you met the king of Saudi Arabia in the day? Oh, way before. This yeah. is right. This is when I was learning how to fly. This is way before. This is early on in my, in my, in my aviation career. Well, sadly, Vishal, we're running out of time. I'd like to end this particular segment by saying what I know everybody listening wants to say to you, which is thank you for your service. 
That said, I can't thank you enough. The story was absolutely wonderful and the gift truly inspirational. Fortunately, uh, you can stay for a little while. We're going to tell another story, which will appear in the next podcast. So don't anyone go away. Again, thanks so much.